Welcome to my channel. I'm Zhang Jingxu. Let's work on this problem. Uh, in this problem, it's a little bit difficult, but we can solve them in several steps, and then it become more easy. Uh, in this one, we can see first one we have this slope, right? So we consider it's an object. It just keeps stationary on this slope. And in this one, we need to figure out the coefficient for static friction. This one, and then this slope just uh, melt. And then this uh, coefficient decreases to mu k, the kinetic friction. And then we need to figure out the velocity when it just reaches to this boundary. So in this one, first thing we look at is the part one when this is snow is just the uh, stationary on this slope. On this slope, and we can see first thing we do force analysis. We have gravity, we have normal force, and also we have the friction. Because the tendency for this snow to move is move down, and so this uh, friction to keep it up. So in this one, we can see we project the gravity into component. S component and Y component, we have mg sinus and mg cosinus. First, look at the Y component, we write Newton's second law, we have F1 minus mg cosinus equals zero. Then look at the X component, we have the mg sinus minus the friction equal to zero. And in this case, this uh, is the Static friction, right? It's mu s times uh, uh, f. And when we solve these three equations, we can get the mu s equals tangent theta. So the first one is solved. Then it tells us the snow begins to melt, and then it becomes this slope began be, become to move down. When it move down, we consider this coefficient is kinetic coefficient for friction, right? A coefficient for kinetic friction. This one. So still same thing. We consider the Y component, uh, the Y component, and the the X component to write Newton's law to find acceleration, and then it tells you you know the initial velocity, you know the displacement from this snow to the boundary, and you need to know the final velocity at zero. So for final velocity at zero, it looks like we must know acceleration. Do you agree? Uh, we write Newton's second law to find acceleration. First one, we look at the Y component. It's F minus mg cosine theta equals zero. And the S component is still mg sine theta minus the friction equal to mass times acceleration. See, there is acceleration. And then this friction is mu k times F1. In this one, we can solve the this three equation. We get acceleration is in function with the theta and the mu k. And you can say theta and the mu k are given. So in this one, you can get acceleration. After you get the acceleration, you can use our favorite equation to find this velocity at the boundary. And when this slow moves to there, this velocity is this way, right? Still with the angle theta, with the horizontal. So this one. Then we can consider this one horizontal and this one as vertical. This is uh, still angle theta. Now, the next one is just a project motion. Tell you if the edge of the roof is 10 meters above the ground. Ask you the speed, the slope when it hits the ground. So in this one, it looks like this snow will do project motion. And then ask you the speed at zero. So when you want to find the speed at zero, it looks like you must know the speed at x component, at y component, right? So we need to find, so there, because we know this initial velocity uh, after we solve the problem B. And then we need to project it in the, this uh, horizontal component and the y component. And we consider this one as x, again, this one as y for project motion. And then we know the acceleration for the free fall body is the, just the g. And the displacement in the y component is there y. So in this one, very easy. We can find the velocity at the y component. And the velocity at the x component keep constant. So we can solve this way. This is the final velocity way. And then see, now we input the numbers inside the first one, mu s equal tangent theta, is easy. The next one, we can solve the equation, find the function for acceleration, and then input the numbers. We can get the velocity. When this uh, slow comes to this boundary, it's just 6.8 meter per second. And then at this velocity, it is just with an angle to the horizontal, this angle is 30. Four degrees. So we need to project it in the x component and the y component. Do you agree? So in the x component and the y component. So at the y component, we just times the sine thirty four degree, 
And then in this one, we can solve the y component, the velocity y, after this uh, freefall body just moves the delta y ten meters. This one we can get it at the delta y is zero, and the x component keeps constant. So then we consider this velocity has x component and a y component. So this velocity has an x component and the y component, and then we can solve the velocity for the consider both x y x component y component. So it is x component square plus y component square squared. And then we find it is 16 meter per second. In this problem, it looks a little bit difficult, but when we just cut this problem in several steps, you can see it's just a combination for other problems. First one, the static friction coefficient. Second one, we consider is the kinetic friction and then find acceleration and then find the velocity as a boundary. The last one is just a very simple project motion. Thank you.